being seated for our next contest. the humorous speech contest. So if you used your cell phone at the break, please, please turn it off or at least silence it. Once the contest has begun, the surgeon at arms will secure the doors. Members of the audience are asked to refrain from leaving or entering the room during the contest. After the contest, please do not leave the room until it has been determined that all ballots have been collected. Here is the speaking order for the humorous contest. Contestant number one, Cyrus Bracey. Cyrus Bracey, contestant number one. Contestant number two, Joanna Bradford. Joanna Bradford, contestant number two. Contestant number three, Brad Belmore. Brad Belmore, contestant number three. Contestant number four, Jose Torres. Jose Torres, contestant number four. Contestant number five, Judith Markowitz. Judith Markowitz, Contestant number five. Contestant number six, Nicole Canel. Nicole Canel, contestant number six. We will proceed with the humorous speech contest. There will be one minute of silence between each contestant. Timers, when I advise you to do so, Please give me a signal when one minute is up. After all contestants have spoken, the judges will be given all the time they need to complete their ballots. We will now begin the humorous speech contest. It's as easy as riding a bike. It's as easy as riding a bike. Cyrus Bracey. I'm a guest. It's as easy as riding a bike. I'm pretty sure that's how that quote goes. I say, I consider myself a good father. I was there when my, for my daughter's first steps her first words, and I've always been involved in all of her activities. Yeah, even when she started taking dance. I was the father at the back of the, at the dance recital and, and at, all of her reci at all of her practices, and I was her favorite <laughs> dance partner when we got home. Now, somewhere between first grade and kindergarten, I decided it was time for her to learn how to ride a bike without training wheels. So one morning I woke up, one Saturday morning, and said, honey, go get your helmet, and we'll go for a bike ride. So there I was in the garage when she comes in. I had a wrench in one hand, training wheel in the other. And here she comes with her helmet. <laughs> Dad, she looks at the bike, she looks at me, Dad, what did you do? <laughs> Baby, I think it's time for you to learn how to ride a bike without training wheels. No, it's not time yet. Put it back on, you broke it. And she marches out. Well, I don't like to rush my little girl. It's, it, she'll let me know when it's time. So about a year later, she comes to me, Dad, I've outgrown my bicycle. 
can we get another? I want a new bicycle. I don't want training wheels. Cool. So we went out that evening, bought a new bike, pink, little basket, little bottle with no training wheels. Great. I went home that evening, put it together, and of course I had to practice in front of the mirror. You know. Honey, you got it, you got it, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Honey, you got it, you got it. Honey, whoo, 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 you got it, you got it. There we go. All right, all right, that's the one, that's the one. So next morning we wake up bright and early. She's got her new bicycle. She's got, of course, I'm the dad of sprung for all the new PPE, personal protective equipment. <laughs> She's got her new helmet, her arm pads, knee pads. We're ready to go. Everybody knows the method. You know, the, the sitting behind, you're, you're right behind your child, you're bound, giving them enough balance. And of course, she's, all right, Dad, you got it, you got it, Dad. Let go, no, no, watch where you're going, watch where you're going. No, no, okay, all right. We did this all day. Just watch, watch where you're going, no, not the tree, not the tree. Oh, no, stay on the path, get it. Don't hit the lady. <laughs> By the end of that day, I had run at least a marathon. <laughs> not just any marathon, not, not, not the 26 mile marathon with the gym shoes. I had sandals on, blue jeans, a polo shirt, and yeah, this was that marathon where you were like this. <laughs> My child has to have eyes in the back of her head. Because the moment the tips of my fingers would leave the seat, and <laughs> she knew! <laughs> she, she's right along, I'm too fast, Dad, too fast! As soon as my fingertips leave, no, 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 boom! She was one step below bubble wrap, so she was okay. <laughs> now, that night I went home, I was sore. If I lived in another time, another place, at that moment I would be thinking, it's time to climb that great mountain to seek the wisdom, the guidance of the elders, the, the wise ones. <sighs> I don't live in that time. So I do live. <laughs> All right. You're teaching your child to ride a bicycle. Riding, walking behind your child like a maniac method. No, we will not do that one. <laughs> Pulling with a string method. Top of the steep hill method. Oh, God, I see DCFS and the mercy room in my future. <laughs> so, as I'm going along, I see one method. I'm like, wow. Oh, wow, this would work. Okay. Next morning, we wake up. Her confidence in me is a little shattered. You know, she's looking at me like, you sure you got this, Dad? But this method, okay. it was very unique. And, and as an engineer, it made sense. From her previous experience of riding a bicycle, she learned the, the directional control of said vehicle from a tricycle and from, the, from a one with training wheels. And she, know how, she knows how to pedal it. It's that 9.8 meters per second squared, the gravity. It's centripetal force she needs to master. <laughs> with the pedals, made it a game. All she had to do was pull along. So when you get up to 20 seconds, when you can put your feet up for 20 seconds, you're good. So here we go. She's going around the park. 10 seconds, Dad. 15 seconds, Dad. Now, this time I got, last time I got, yesterday I got a little bit different looks. I got the, oh, he's so cute. He's teaching his baby how to ride. <laughs> That's a good name. You know, the, mm, I wish my baby daddy would come <laughs> Today I got the different looks. I got the, got it on sale, huh? Uh, you put it together yourself. You know, there's pedals in it. <laughs> We're fine. So by the time we got to the, all the way around the park, and she was excited. 20 seconds, Dad! I got it, I got it! All right, put the pedals on, and after a few pushes, here she goes. I was like, oh great, she's got this. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait! <sighs> Video camera. All right, do it again. <laughs> you got it, you got it, yeah, you got it, you ride the bike. <sighs> My little girl's 11 now. Couple more years, she'll be driving a car. I heard that's really easy. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Joanna Bradford, it's just so. It's just so, Joanna Bradford.
prove my point, a couple weeks after we had the talk, he comes to me. Mom, I'm out of body wash. Can I have some soap? I had to break up with a six pack. <laughs> Brad Belmont, you will go to hell for that. <laughs> you will go to hell for that, Brad Belmont. Squad, she thought it was her obligation to date the captain of the football team, me. 
That was her great contribution to making the world a better place. <laughs> <laughs> Problem was, back then, I didn't date. I went to this really strict church that considered everything a sin. <laughs> Going to the movies was a sin. Playing cards was a sin. Dancing was a sin. In fact, trying to figure out what was a sin was a sin. <laughs> I got through high school without going to hell by doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> I got to the point where I would just bark out, that's against my religion, as soon as my friends would ask me to do anything. And sometimes that was a little awkward. Dude, seriously? Lunch is against your religion? I didn't go to hell, so I was happy. I was hungry, but I was happy. <laughs> All that was about to unravel, though, because Chrissy said to me, we should go to the dance after the football game tonight together, to which I responded the only way I possibly could. Sure! <laughs> <laughs> Except that sure, the one I just said now, ten times more manly than the one I actually said that day. <laughs> so I quickly turned around and walked away before I could embarrass myself. Now, I know some of you in the audience are judging me right now. How could I so easily set aside my religious convictions for the sake of a girl? And in my defense, I'd like to say, I am not the first man to follow a pretty face into hell. <laughs> in your defense, I asked myself the very same thing. Because as I walked away from her, I realized, I'm going to go to hell. If I walk into that dance, I might as well just go check myself in with Satan, begin eternal damnation right now. Because <laughs> I knew from church that dancers go to a burning hell full of anguish and suffering and pain forever and ever and ever. But worse than that, worse than eternal torment, I was about to expose my secret shame to the world. I can't dance. <laughs> if there's a dance contest between me, Frankenstein, and the mummy, third place for sure, solid third. <laughs> <laughs> now, as far as I can tell, there's two things you need to be a good dancer. First, you've got to have a little wiggle. I got wiggle. I was an amazing running back in high school. I was elusive, I was evasive. I knew how to shake my hips to make the tacklers miss. I got wiggle. What I lacked was that second thing you need, the more important thing. I got no rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> that church, that real strict church, that's a hand clapping church. Everybody claps their hands for every song, all the time. Because that's the way God likes it. <laughs> everybody clap their hands, except for me. Because when I clap my hands, eventually I'd get off beat so bad, I'd screw up everybody around me. <laughs> so the pastor pulled me aside. He said, son, you've got to stop clapping your hands when we sing. I said, but that's the way God likes it. He said, no, God don't like it when you clap your hands. <laughs> when you mess up everybody around you, that makes Jesus cry. <laughs> Do you want to make Jesus cry? I said, no. And he said, Good, because you go to hell for that. <laughs> so I said, well, what am I supposed to do? He said, when it comes time to clap your hands, you feel that temptation, you just take those hands, you show them deep in your pants pockets as they'll go, and you keep them there until we're done singing. <laughs> Don't you touch nothing, because you go to hell for that. <laughs> <laughs> so perhaps you're not rhythm challenged like I am. Perhaps you're one of those people that have rhythm and have wiggle. And when you go on the dance floor, everybody loves to watch you, you dance. But if you're not one of those lucky people, if you're like me, and your wiggle and your rhythm collide, well, that's a train wreck nobody wants to see. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly the luck that I bring to the dance floor. It's like I'm in the Matrix, but instead of dodging both, I'm dodging the beat. <laughs> <laughs> so now you understand my dilemma. Not only am I facing damnation, I'm facing embarrassment. And that's why I had so much anxiety that day at school that my stomach was in a constant knot. I was sick. I didn't know how I was going to get out of this. I kept thinking, there's got to be a way out. And that's when it dawned on me. There's still a football game to play. I went in that game as recklessly as I could, <laughs> hoping I could get lucky and break my leg. <laughs> Unfortunately for me, Amazing wiggle, excessive recklessness, combined to give me the best game possible. <laughs> it was unstoppable. Finally, the coach pulled me out when the score was real high. I had to go sit on the bench. And as soon as I sat down, all that anxiety just came back. And my stomach started churning. 
I'm thinking, I'm the most unlucky man in the world. I cannot get hurt, and I've got a gorgeous girl that wants to go to a dance with me. <laughs> and then I realized, she's talking to me. So she really used to stand right behind where the football bench was. So I get up, and I'm stumbling over where Christy was, just praying that there's somebody to get out of this. And that's when the miracle happened. I puked out her shoes. <laughs> Fountain of Gatorade and angst. <laughs> but I didn't have to go to the dance now, because I was sick. No damnation, no embarrassment. I was thrilled. Chrissy, not so much. <laughs> but I'd like to tell you she got over that. And she went from being my crush to becoming my high school sweetheart to ultimately becoming my wife. Aww. But that would be a lie. <laughs> me to a dance, and this would have happened. <laughs> and making people watch this, well, you go to hell for that. Jose Torres, a trip down memory lane. A trip down memory lane. house with a toy and milk, 
my head is hers. <laughs> so I said, oh, hold on. No. But can I get it? But it's mine! At this moment, at this time, other people are passing me by, grabbing their kids, like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> look, look that way. And I looked at my wallet. I said, ladies, men always have money in their wallet. <laughs> fold it, try fold it, square, under the credit card right there. <laughs> if you ever need to pay a bill, look in there. <laughs> It'll be there. And I said, I have enough. I could do this. You will not notice. <laughs> Don't tell your mom. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Pay for it. Got home. Honey, where's the milk? Oh, it's here. Oops. Mommy, look! <laughs> See, at this point, battery came off. He used to talk. He no longer talks. What is that? It's a toy. I know it's a toy. I asked you to go get milk. Why does Josiah have a toy? Well, what happened was, you see, it was like I walked in the store, the toy looked at me, I looked at the toy. <laughs> Josiah looked at the toy. We all fell in love with the toy. <laughs> Jose, this cannot happen. <coughs> you have to be strong. You have to be able to go to the store and get what you need and get out. Okay, fair enough. Hey, babe, I'm going to the store. I need to pick up some bolts at Autosol. Take Josiah with you. Autosol? No toys? Fair enough. Let's go, buddy. Man on man time right now. Here we go. Get him in the car. Walked into the office home. And there it was. Not the bolts. But Mr. Panda. <laughs> you see, Mr. Panda's not just an, any ordinary toy. He's an air freshener. <laughs> <laughs> With wiggly eyes. <laughs> chocolates and the candy. But we are out of soul. Why do we have candy and toys, air freshener looking thing, and a 46-year-old man behind the counter, Harley Davidson driver, roll up sleeves, looks at me, I look at him, I look at the side. If that was my son, I said, I said, what? <laughs> If he was your son? <laughs> I need those bolts, the panda head, <laughs> and while I'm at it, let me get some candy. <laughs> <laughs> and back to the house I was. Jose, did you get your bolts? Yeah, baby, I got the bolts. <laughs> what else did you get? Because <laughs> you already knew I was weak. <laughs> I was going to fail. <laughs> Because the ladies know. They know everything. <laughs> I got a panda. A panda? What do you need a panda for? What do you see? I drive a van now. I don't drive the car like this. I drive the car like this. No, I need an air freshener. Panda looking thing. Staring at me while I'm driving. Well, Jose, you need to learn to say no. Well, that's what he tells me. No! But you need to learn how to use it. You need to. Use those words. So today, those are the words of encouragement from me to you. You could use no. You could use I don't want to. You could say it. It's mine. Just do it on your job. <laughs> on Friday, when your boss comes and says, hey, buddy, I need you to do this right away. No! <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> it's my time. <laughs> Please.
Judith Markovic, Baba Wax. Baba Wax, Judith Markovic. Good morning, Dimco. I am delighted to be here, and I want to say a shout out to Dr. Schmutzige. Dr. S, thank you for inviting me to speak here today. Folks, when I speak in groups like this, people often ask me, Judith, what is it that you do? And I say to them, I make your dreams come true. <laughs> That's right. That's my job. <laughs> Let me ask you this. What is your dream? Do you dream of having smooth, silky skin for the rest of your life? Do you want financial security? Or you, perfect health? Or do you want to win that beer-chugging contest? <laughs> Whatever your dream is, you, I, we, can transform that dream into reality simply by using the most powerful elixir known to humankind. Babalux. <laughs> oh, oh, I can tell that some of you are thinking, Judith, I hear these very same claims every single day on Home Shopping Network. <laughs> Why should I believe you? Folks, that's a very smart question. Don't just take what I have to say. Listen to what experts from around the world are saying about Babalux. Babalux, c'est un elixir miraculeux. <laughs> Canadian beauty sleep expert, Prairie Shop. <laughs> <laughs> Babalux, the elixir mu'ojiza. African movie mogul, Hakuna Matata. World renowned fashionista Pierre Cardigan Armoni. <laughs> now, why are these experts singing the praises of Babalux? Because Babalux is 100% safe and 110% natural. <laughs> it has vitamins A, C, E, and K through 12. <laughs> no other product can make those claims. Babalux is luxurious. Moments after you put it on your skin, your skin will glitter and gleam with health and beauty Multi-millionaires will throw themselves <laughs> to give your company money, and you, you will become the employee of the decade. <laughs> but, I have to warn you folks, the effects of Babalus are so immediate <coughs> and so powerful, we have had to create a release for our clients. Now, some of you might be wondering, Judith, how can Babalux be so very powerful? It's because we put in a secret sauce. <laughs> well, Dr. Schmutziger knows I do not like to talk about what's in that secret sauce. However, he has assured me that I can trust you. <laughs> The essence of that secret sauce comes from this modest-looking creature. Our scientists have been able to extract the life source, the liquid gold that this creature leaves behind <laughs> as it moves forward. And because of that, Babalux is incomparable. People have said to me, Judith, that word, that word is just too long. <laughs> and I say to them, nothing is too long or too 
shook the floor of Babylon because it is unique. Oh, it's true. Some have tried to imitate Babylon. The government of France poured millions of euros into its efforts, but they have all failed. Why? Because Quavalux is a miraculous elixir. <laughs> <laughs> and folks, this is why the experts are so excited about Babylon. <laughs> Now, normally, Babalux sells for $2,500. But because you are friends of Dr. Schmutziger, I am going to give it to you today, for today only, for just $8.99. That's right, for just $8.99. You can have this wonder of wonders Babalux. And if you buy in the next five minutes, <laughs> I will include this extra bottle of bottle ups and this lovely carrot. <laughs> now some of you might be wondering, Judith, why are you doing this for us? It's my job. <laughs> but more than that, it's so that you, I, and Babalux can make your dreams come true. <laughs> Nicole Kinnear, run, run as fast as you can. Run, run as fast as you can. Nicole Kinnear. Run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. Who remembers that story from childhood? It's one of my favorites. In case you're not familiar with it, it's the story of a little gingerbread man who doesn't want to be eaten. He runs away from the woman who baked him and is chased all around town before he's finally caught and eaten by a clever fox. Now, like most of you, I left that story behind in childhood. Until about ten years ago, when the gingerbread man started chasing me. I was in a store with my mother, and I happened upon a salt and pepper shaker set in the shape of gingerbread. It, it was cute. Put it back on the shelf. My mother asked, well, what was I looking at? And I pointed out the shakers. She agreed. Yeah, they were cute. Well, apparently, I expressed a little too much interest because a couple of weeks later, I found myself the proud owner of my very own set. Now, I interrupt my story with a question. Have any of you ever received a gift that had a life of its own? <laughs> that spiraled out of control? Yes, my friends, that's what happened to me. Started simple, but that's how my gingerbread house was built. The next year, my mother, who had started sewing again, made me a set of gingerbread placemats <laughs> and hot pads. A nice addition to my holiday decorating, if you will. 
Now, my mother lives in the middle of nowhere. And I can say that because, well, she lives in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> in fact, if you miss her driveway, your next step is the Canadian Border Patrol. <laughs> Minnesota, they are kind of harsh. They get a lot of snow, so she's got time to kill. Over the next couple of years, she followed up the placemats with a set of appliance covers, the toaster, the bread machine, the stand mixer. <laughs> then there was the year that I got curtains for the back door. <laughs> and I thought she was done when I got my gingerbread apron. <laughs> Now you would think that my mother had exhausted her gingerbread possibilities. And you would think that this is where the story ends. You'd be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's when the family stepped in. <laughs> I'll be the first one to admit gifts from relatives, but they can be horrible. You just don't see them enough. It's hard to find that perfect gift. Well, my family, they found a way around this gift giving challenge. They found a theme. <laughs> <laughs> My grandmother was the first one to jump in. She came up with some molded cookie sheets <laughs> and several cookie cutters, including one that was running. Isn't he cute, she said. It'll go lovely with your gingerbread collection. <laughs> Thanks, Graham. Thanks. <laughs> My sister had to put in her two cents. There were the dish towels. A lot of fun. And then my mother, mother came up with not one, <laughs> but two Kleenex box covers. <laughs> really, Mom? Was that absolutely necessary? <laughs> Perhaps sensing my frustration, my mother took a year off. Not to worry, my aunt stepped in. <laughs> <laughs> she confided in me that she didn't know what to get me. And then she remembered that my mother said I liked gingerbread, and she came up with an assortment of gingerbread ornaments. <laughs> <laughs> There was the year of the garland, both wooden and beaded. <laughs> and what house would be complete without my very own set of gingerbread lights? I was shopping with my sister. She pointed out some, oh look, gingerbread earrings. It assured me that they would look just lovely on me. I assured her I'd had quite enough of gingerbread, thank you very much. Enough. I should have talked to the rest of the family. My aunt came up with some soft sculpture. <laughs> My grandmother, some wall hangings. <laughs> My sister, the trader, put gingerbread socks in my holiday stocking. <laughs> I had a word with my mother. Mom, I love you. You guys are great. But my apartment's only so big, guys. Can you get them to stop? She said that she would go ahead and talk to them, that maybe the gifts would stop. <laughs> yep, right. They were having too much fun. <laughs> it had become a game, a contest. Who can find me a gift that's practical, but also gingerbread? And it just kept coming. There was the cookie carrier. <laughs> Many family members that have been involved. My 
mother, my grandmother, my sister, my aunt, a couple of cousins. I think they need themes of their own. <laughs> There's lots of possibilities here. This may require thought and perhaps regifting. <laughs> run, run as fast as you can. If you slow down, there's going to be another gingerbread man. <laughs> Mr. Jones, Master, we have all the balance. Thank you, sir. Otherwise, you have to do 
everything. <laughs> Tim, thank you for your participation. How long was your highest educational level in Toastmasters? Alright, I belong to the club 665 and this is my home club over here. <laughs> and I have completed my CC and struggling to proceed forward. <laughs> Excellent. If you could give one tip for those people in the audience who have not competed yet, what would that tip be? Come up on the stage, it's a very good learning experience for yourself as you're up on the stage and also by looking at excellent evaluators and excellent speech contestants. Just do it. Romeo, same questions. How long have you been in Toastmasters? I've been on Toastmasters for a long time. So that I refuse to answer the question. It's <laughs> <laughs> an indication of my age, which I don't like to do. And if you ask me what I was born, I will not answer that question. <laughs> well, I noticed that uh, one of your hobbies is Tai Chi. What's your favorite move? <laughs> Are you <serious? laughs> Actually, a blocking and a hitting in the face. It's actually a very nice move. So. <laughs> <laughs> but most people don't learn the self defense, just like that. Just the relaxation. Well, Robert, thank you for participating. Toastmasters off. 
off and on for 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, as it has to talk about the interests that you have in addition to cleaning, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you put here reading, what type of books do you like to read? Uh, I like mystery, uh, non-fiction, devotionals, uh, women's fiction, I'm working on something, and if it had a genre, it would be Christian African American literary fiction. <laughs> I <think>. oh. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much. For this. Well, how long have you been in those masters? Which club? I'm with CBS Care Art Club, and I've been a part of that for about two and a half years. And I'm an ACS and an ALB. Awesome. I see you a club president, so if your officers don't follow your rules, do you tell them you'll go to hell for that? How do you motivate it? As many of you know, the big problem with being part of a corporate club is that job comes first. So unfortunately, it's a frequent occasion that somebody can't show up because their boss has something else for them to do. So my motivation is the ones that are using this as part of their development program for work, then I talk to the boss. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. For the
call back to the stage our Northeast Division Governor, Tiffany Selinko.